This is a Swedish cheese. It's a normal cheese, except it doesn't come pre-sliced like many of you might be used to. So, how do we eat it? No, not like that, we're not savages anymore. Instead, we use this Norwegian, <clears throat> I mean Swedish invention called Osthuven. With this, we make our own slices. A light press gives a thin slice, and a hard press gives a thick slice. A perfect invention for the perfect slice of cheese. But there is one big issue. If the cheese slicer is operated by a careless, non-trained, and well, usually non-Scandinavian hand, you might accidentally commit one of the worst Swedish crimes possible, creating the slope of sin. This abomination is referred to as a ski slope, mainly because of its likeness to a ski slope. At this point, it's almost impossible to slice a good piece of cheese. That's why in today's video we are eternalizing this slope of sin in not just one, but three artworks. As a reminder to the world that cheese slicing is a skill that should never be taken lightly. My project always starts with a sketch. A simple sketch serves as a foundation for the rest of the artworks. And it represents a simple idea. In this case, it's a slope of sin with a fearless snowboarder who's pulling off a stylish method grab. I also gave him a Swedish flag under his board. But for the first actual artwork, we're going to need a 3D model of a cheese. I like to start my 3D models with a reference image. That way I can get the initial shape somewhat correct. After we have the overall shape of the cheese, we're going to need a few holes. I also made a preliminary outline for the track so that I know where to put the holes. I imagine that the rider has been maneuvering skillfully between the holes. After I was happy with the sheets, I projected the actual track onto the sheets. I once again used a reference image to get the curves right. I ended up with a very cool looking sheets, but it's missing a rider. So I added a preliminary snowboarder onto the scene. So far everything looks good, but I'm worried about the snowboarder. Why am I worried? Well, I wanted to hold out for as long as possible, but I have to reveal the first artwork now. So here goes. Drum roll, please. The first artwork is going to be... A keychain. <laughs> I, I thought it would be fun to carry a cheesy yoke with you. Because it's going to be a keychain, it's going to be small. I have a 3D model of my hand, true to scale, in this scene. And now you might understand why I'm worried about this snowboarder. Will he print? I have no idea. And if he does, will he even hold? The concern is real, but as a wise man once said, it is not a problem, it is a challenge. 14 hours and 19 minutes later, we have our first print. That's a really long print time for such a small piece, but I'm sure the end results are worth it. Well, it's floating in a tank. This is what I could salvage. Honestly, it's all gravy. I expected some failures when pushing my printer to the limit. I also haven't modeled a proper snowboarder yet. The reason being, I have no idea how. The only 3D modeling experience I have is related to parametric design and buildings. I've never modeled a human before, so I had to learn that from scratch. And <laughs> oh boy, I had, I had too much fun with this. I had to learn completely new 3D skills to be able to pose and sculpt a proper snowboarder. But that's one of the reasons why I make these seemingly random projects. Because I always stumble upon something new and it's so fun to learn. After many trials and errors, I at least had something that resembled a snowboarder. Because the scale is so small, I don't think the details will matter too much. After she was placed onto the cheese, all I had left was to model a small ring where I will attach the actual chain. Something like that. Let's play some supports and soon we'll have print number two. A big improvement this time, but still not a completely successful print. Let's take a closer look. The snowboarder is there, but she's mostly a blob. All the details disappeared and she seems to be missing a few limbs. But as always, these failed prints can still be useful and this deformity will get the honor of being stress tested to the max. First, let's turn it into an actual keychain.
And now we can begin some basic handling. Can it withstand some tugging? Check. Is it resistant to hand pressure? Check. Will it hold up if I drop it? Check. Basic handling? Check. Now time for some moderate handling. I will put it on my keys and use it for 24 hours. After using it for 24 hours, I think it's surprisingly sturdy. The sheath is not going to break anytime soon. However, the snowboarder is missing. I don't know when she fell off, but probably very early. She was always the weakest link, and now I have to come up with a different design for that part. But before we get into that, let's see if we can break this thing. Time for some extreme handling. First, let's see how much weight it can handle. 500 grams? No problem. 3 kilos? Not even a sweat. 10 kilos? Still holding. And now I'm worried I will break my fishing scale. This bag weighs maybe 17 kilos, so it has to break soon. Well, something broke, but not the keychain. What broke was this metal, which to me is just insane. I know that hardened plastic can be hard, sure, but harder than metal? Well, it's safe to say that the sheaths can withstand some extreme handling. But the rider broke at just moderate handling, which is why we need to fix that part. Back to the drawing table. I have one idea that I want to try. Uh, the idea is to move the rider into one of the sheath holes, and then we cover it with some see-through resin. This should create a smooth surface all over the sheath, but still leave the rider visible. I'm having more and more successful prints now, with less warping. But the snowboarder is just too small to be able to print like this. Even at 10 microns, she just disappears, or she's melted together into a blob. I'm worried that I will have to skip the rider altogether in this keychain. I did try a version where the snowboarder is upside down, and only the board is visible, which I thought was kind of funny. I even managed to paint it, but you don't really understand what it is unless you know the full story. I've also realized that the pointy end is too sharp, but that's nothing we can't fix. Here's a version that finally looks promising. I had to compromise and half of the snowboarder is inside the snow, but at least you can kind of see that it's a person there. She's only missing one arm. That's an improvement. I'm going to paint this version and move forward in the process, while still trying new versions with slightly different supports and sizes. The latest version looks very, very promising, although I could have done a better paint job on the rider. While we're on the subject of paint, I can't get it to stick. It's just peeling off. I've tried different primers, matte varnish, gloss varnish, acrylic, oil, you name it. The only thing that's really not peeling off is this see-through resin. So I think I'm just going to try and cover the whole thing in this goo. It was really hard to paint the snowboarder. It's very tiny, but I gave it my best shot. I made two versions, one with a bit more texture and one with a more smooth finish. And the final step is just to glaze them with some UV resin. Here's how they turned out in the end. I kinda messed up the glazing a little bit, but overall I'm pretty happy. I also really want to start with the other artworks, so I'm content with the keychains for now. So the keychain was the main artwork, but we're not done yet. For the second artwork we're going to need a better sketch than what we have. Thankfully we don't have to start from scratch, since we do have a 3D model of the sheath, which we can render into a digital artwork. After the sheath was rendered, I printed it out. After it was printed, I started working on the physical drawing. When the drawing was done, I threw it into Photoshop for some final touches. I used my original render as an overlay to add shadows and color. What's great about mixed media 
is that any mistake you make on the physical drawing can just be corrected in the computer. It's almost like an undo button in real life. It releases some of the pressure that at least I feel when drawing by hand. The snowboarder went through a similar process of first being hand drawn, then retouched in the computer. Of course, we can't forget the name, Slope of Sin. Here is the final version of the digital drawing, which I once again printed out and put on a t-shirt. I made three versions, a black t-shirt, a grey t-shirt with slightly bigger print and a hoodie that's a little bit small for me. I had a blast designing these garments. I even got my logo and my website printed on the inside. How cool is that? What do you think? Would you wear this? The time has come to make the third and final artwork. We're going to use an old version of the Keychain 3D model and scale it up. Then we'll make some bigger holes in the cheese that goes all the way down. We're also going to remove the chain holder. Since this model is so much bigger than the keychain and we don't really need those fine details, this one will be printed on my FDM printer instead. We will be using this yellow filament so we don't have to paint it. Of course, we can't forget the snowboarder, and that one I have to paint. But it was much easier now that it's slightly bigger. With everything put together, we now got a somewhat practical pen stand. This third artwork was my favorite one. I love it. If you want to print this yourself, you can download the file for free on my website frankadrian.art. Before this video ends, I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you for the amazing support you've shown lately. We're close to a thousand subscribers, which is huge. So thank you, thank you so much. Now, exciting things are on the horizon. I'm working on some very cool stuff uh, <laughs> that I can't wait to share with you. But that's not all. I've also just launched a brand new Discord server. I want to connect with you a little bit more. And I thought this could be the perfect space to talk about 3D printing, content creation or design. I will be there every day. So if you have any questions, just come into the Discord server and ask me. Maybe I can help. Of course, it's 100% free to join. Uh, link is in the description. Thanks again for watching and thanks for the continued support and I will see you in the server or in the next video. Thank you.